Growing up as a young child, I knew I was a bit different from my peers. While other people were playing video games, I was in the forest foraging and trying to eat bugs. Along that journey, I felt quite alone actually. Um, I felt like I didn't have a mentor or a guide to teach me about nature. So in my urban farming journey, I felt the need to be that mentor to other people. When I feel that educating children is really, really important, they are very open to learning and they're the future. After leaving Earth Keepers, I'm continuing my journey in Australia. I'm here at Green Connect, an 11-acre working farm and education centre where they teach children how food is grown. Welcome to Green Connect Farm. The plan today is we're going to go for a walk around. You can ask as many questions as you like. And we're going to talk about food in a really open and honest way because it's important. So my name is Chris. I'm an urban farmer. Unlike this beautiful land with lots of space in Singapore, we grow plants and vegetables on places like skyscrapers, on rooftops. Yes. Um, how did the plant survive because of how high up they are? My last project was on the top of the world's highest uh, urban farm. So it is 280 meters high. Singapore is very humid and very wet, but on the rooftop, many plants grow better uh, because it's windier. It's very dry, yeah. How did you get the soil into the contract? So if the building is very low, we can get a crane, a tall crane, um, to lower it. Sometimes you get a helicopter. No, just joking. I wish we had a helicopter. So for like the really tall skyscraper, we have to carry it. So it's all muscle power. Excellent. Should we go start walking around? Yeah. Excellent. As we walk through here, guys, you can feel these leaves. So these are all leaves that have a different smell. This is called salvia. And it has really, really deep roots that go right down into the ground. And the salvia draws up all of the nutrients that aren't on the top of the soil. And what we do is we just cut the branches back, we drop them on the ground, and then the leaves release all those nutrients back onto the topsoil. Who would like a mulberry? Two maximum. Remember, we only take the black ones. It tastes really good. It's like sweet and sour. They explode in your mouth, don't they? Yeah. We're all going to look like vampires. My first Halloween. I used and then we're all going to this is fake blood and everyone thought I was actually bleeding and it was very nice. I think we live in a society where there's a lot of don't touch, don't break, you know, and you come to a place like this and you're encouraged to experience things. And we learn so much better when we experience rather than just being told. You know, we could tell the kids what a chicken looks like, but if they pick it up and hold it, it becomes this precious thing that they will now value more. The children are going absolutely nuts with the chickens. I love chicken. I'm one with the chicken. These chickens, we don't have them for meat. We just keep them for eggs. These girls will produce an egg six days a week for about 18 months. So one egg? Each chicken? One egg, one day. Actually, I'm not sure who's more excited, the chickens or the children. This is chicken heaven. You can see the child's um, eyes just light up. I want to live here. Dave. I really hope we can have more of these experiences back home. <laughs> Having a tactile experience, I think, is much more powerful than one where you sit back. And that's how we teach in schools. A lot of it's theoretical, but actually having a space where that theory is put into practice that's the preciousness of this place. There's a lot more that you can eat here than you would actually think. It's called watercress. Spicy and delicious. But what I've realised is that there's such a disconnect for young people between where their food is grown, how it's grown, and how it turns up on their plate. You can rub the leaves and smell your finger. So I think 
finding ways to bring school children into a space where they can see their food, from planting a plant to nurturing it to it coming up to the plate, is a really, really important thing to be doing. So pigs are beautiful animals, highly intelligent, as intelligent as a dog or a four-year-old child. So in permaculture, pigs are farmers too. They come in and use their really strong noses to dig under the soil, plus they add their manure to the soil, so they make the soil richer <laughs> and able to then we can then plant our next crops. So even though these are beautiful animals, we are breeding them for human consumption. Who likes eating bacon and ham? Yeah? So one of the things that we all have to understand is that when we eat food, if we eat meat, an animal has to die. If you're going to eat a piece of broccoli, you have to wait. It doesn't just appear. And that's part of the cycle of living. But if we do it in a way where we don't waste food, then we're respecting our food a lot more. So what we're going to do now is we're going to send a couple of you off with Chris and you're going to do some harvesting for some things that we're going to cook. And then the rest of you are going to come with me and we're going to do some digging and some hoeing. Who are my most responsible people? Pete. Yes. When I saw the children doing this tour at Green Connect, at some point during that journey, something in their little minds clicked. It's just like that? Grab the whole bunch. Grab the whole bunch, yeah. Oh yeah. And they seem to find a connection to food and where food comes from. Oh, it smells beautiful. Amazing. My mum usually makes kohlrabi and usually we make it for soups or sometimes we can go off and fry them when it tastes really good. Isn't it amazing that when you teach a child, it, the lessons stay with him for the rest of his life? Yeah. I found that the banana was not a tree, it's a herb. Um, I learned that the flowers, the orange ones, they are really good and the little bulb is spicy. I like spicy. Yeah, it's really spicy. Male bees only have one purpose, which is to mate with the queens. Yep. They don't do anything else at all. After they've mated with the queen, their penis drops off and they die. Someone said something about climate change and I wanted to acknowledge that we are living in a changing climate at the moment. It is getting harder and harder for us to grow food. So we have to come up with smarter, cleverer ways to grow good food. Mm. Mm. Oh, no. oh no, fresh broccolini. <laughs> Broccoli and shallots and I think onions as well. Hey, I got the best ball. Not bad. Professional cooks did this. My takeaway is that we should start this kind of experiential learning from a young age. Bringing kids to where food is really grown and helping them understand this journey, I think that is the best gift that we can give the children. My Green Connect experience has inspired me to work with kids in Singapore too. I'm setting up an aquaponics farm with some boys from my alma mater, St Andrews Secondary School. But first, I need to show them how it works. Alright, good morning boys. This is one of the first aquaponic farms in Singapore on top of a hotel. Does anyone know what aquaponic means? Uh, you're using the fish waste to help nurture the growth of the plants. Awesome. So aquaponics means aquaculture plus hydroponics. In aquaculture, you have the fish and you are using the fish poop to fertilise the plants here, which is in the hydroponics. This technology is actually very old school. This is what the ancient Aztecs in, in Mexico used. They had floating farms made out of natural fibre that also had fish below. So it's very important that we can also understand history and indigenous knowledge to use it in our modern era. Stick your finger into the water. Oh, it's cold! How cold? It's like ice water. Yeah, ice water. Why do you think the water is cold? To stimulate the natural temperature of the plants. Awesome, I think you got it all right. Are there fish in the tank? Very good question. In this particular design, there are no fish here. What will happen is most of the fish will chew on the roots and munch it up. So the fish are kept in a separate tank at the back. Right here in front of you is one of the two types of fish that we have. Anybody has any idea what fish is this? Koi. Koi. Tilapia. Tilapia. Koi. Okay, yeah, tilapia is the right one. Although it looks like koi, I would say. <laughs> so here, 
They are the engine of the entire farm. Once they poop, the poop will convert into nutrients for the plants. So here, we have tilapia. They are about 1 kg to 1.5 kg big. So I'll pass it to the brave soul who's going to catch one of this. OK, the rest be careful, because huh? <laughs> it was better. Half an hour later. Almost, almost. Try it, try it, try it. Oh, 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 yeah! <laughs> now that the boys understand the basics, I want them to have a farm-to-table experience. Alright guys, you're gonna help me harvest some mint here. I'm gonna cut it off, alright. I want them to know how it feels like to harvest their own produce and then cook up something amazing with it. Ditesh, are you having fun? Of course I am. I used to have like plants outside my house. So like normally I water them every day after school. And also, um, I change the soil almost every month. Yeah. Wow. So would you say you have green thumbs? Yes. Yeah. Are you looking forward to the project where you're building your own system? Yeah, I'm looking forward. And I think I would do it by myself. Okay. So the dish we're going to be cooking is tilapia, using the ingredients that we grow here at the hotel. Croutons. Everything, yes. Sauce. You need to whisk quite fast, quite furious. Salad. Pick me some leaves, a few of you. Last thing we will do is cook the fish. We always go away from ourselves, so we don't splash ourselves with the oil. So fish is done. A little bit of the pesto. A couple of croutons. There you go. Now it's your go. So we can do it in a bit of a line and try. I can help you. Back in my time, farming or, or cooking was not something that was cool. It was not something that people were even interested in. But after today's session, I realised that so much has changed. The kids were quite engaged. They got really excited. They all like wanted to jump in and be like their own master chef. So with all these herbs, all the aroma is trapped. So the heat it releases that oil. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I thought that was really fun watching them have that energy and that interest. Nice. Okay. Morning, boys. Right, we're here to set up an aquaponics system. There'll be two levels of the vegetable growing bed, and then there'll be a fish tank. And on the step below, there will be the bioreactor where you hold the bacteria, as well as the water tank where the pump will be pumping the water out from. Okay, so there's just four components of this system. The program will be split into three days. Okay, this here is called the IBC tank. It's used to store water, and we're going to use this recycled material as the bit to grow vegetables. All right, so we're going to have to cut out the top part of this tank, and then we're going to flip it over like a little bowl. That's where we'll put the vegetables. When you're cutting, try not to cut, leaving a, a edge on top, because that's very dangerous. It poke you. Right. You can try. I, I believe you guys can do it. Come on, channel your. <laughs> Naruto! Come on, come on. <laughs> now, I'm no expert when it comes to aquaponics, which is why I've asked for help. My friend Boon Hien runs an indoor aquaponics farm and he's the real brain behind our ambitious project. So let's say I'm going to cut here. Instead of pushing, you pull. Any idea what this is? Chocolate. Don't try to eat it, okay? Okay, so this is made from clay. You dig out from the earth, you roll it into a ball and you bake it. And this is what it is. So clay balls don't just retain moisture well, they're also environmentally friendly. That's why we're using them as a the growing medium. Okay, so how many like bags of clay balls are we supposed to put 
in like a tank? Like think of the roots of a plant, right? Okay. So how deep do the roots of the plant need to be? Like to be happy. Like deep. How deep? Maybe like this much? This much? This I much? think it would be this much maybe? Okay. So we go with that. So okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so do some math. Are you sure? Okay, thank you. They're so adorable. So innocent. Okay, wait. Wait, not spray it, not spray it. Okay, now, next. Why are all different colors? Wait, 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 wait. Let's even it up first. Let's yes, even. Even, yes, even. So there'll be three layers like that. And the wood will be lining all the way around. So I need to count and ensure that we have enough wood. No, then we have. We have we have 78 man? No, 78 minus 26. Yeah. 52, 52. Yeah. Good math. Yeah. These boys math are so fast at doing the math. I don't want to check this one. Oh, should be anything. You said no, it is I, correct. I, 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 yeah, because we need 4 extras. Okay, so number of pieces is 26. Uh, we need to cut 52, but 4 is for spare. So 56 is the total we need. Okay, I trust. <laughs> trust you guys. So the day started with the kids being extremely enthusiastic, them you know, wanting to volunteer to cut the metal and be really involved. Oh, wow. But at the end of the day, they're like all really exhausted. How do you guys feel so far? Tired. Tired? <laughs> okay. So I really wonder whether the kids actually have the stamina and endurance to see this project through. So what we have here is a mock-up of what it will look like soon on the steps. All the light balls that you've been washing will go inside here and all the plants will be in here. Some of the boys were preparing the wood for the cover, a screen, to make the whole setup look much prettier. Yeah, so that's how it's all going to look like. Okay, so basically, you guys have done a really good job. So keep up the progress, alright? The next process that we're going to do is sanding and because the setup will be outdoors, over time the wood will break down. So we are applying a varnish to slow down the degradation of the wood. When you guys joined this urban farming project, was this what you guys thought it would be? No, I thought all the materials will come from a company which makes them, then we will just like install things and put in the plants and fishes. You know, over this journey from visiting the farm at Fairmont to doing some of these stuff, has your appreciation for farming increased? Definitely. Now that we're in this very modern society, you don't really see it every day in Singapore that you see old people growing uh, lettuces and uh, fish and stuff. So like, it really opened my eyes to urban farming and I really like it. This is what happens when you leave a bunch of boys together for 10 minutes, unsupervised. <laughs> okay, go a bit easier on the paint uh, so it doesn't drip too much. <laughs> the next thing, we'll continue doing the wood preparation. So the hammers are here, the nails. Use this 40mm months. And we'll also need to come up with a draft design for the signage. Boys, well, I just want to say that I know that doing all these painting work, manual work, is very tiring. But I'm very proud of you that you've achieved so much. So you deserve... Here and here, we okay. connect it to interest. Yeah. So even though I'm supposed to be the mentor for the students, I'm still a greenhorn in aquaponics. So I'm learning from Bun Hien how to set up the aquaponics system. The trick uh, is to glue this one first. Once you glue this, uh, jam with that's mm. it. Uh, I think it's a bit too long. What I'll do is, you do estimation. Like. So he's the real teacher. <laughs> and then I'm the one using the knowledge that I've gained to, to share with the students. Yeah, so it's a little ecosystem of uh, knowledge sharing. It's definitely a very collaborative process.
Over the course of these three days, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, so what exactly do we put on the signage? Say there's a dead fish like, in, in our aquaponics farm, like, what, what would we do with it? I never really set any expectations, but I think they have really owned this project. We could plant the mints and then after that, you can put a sign that says, try rubbing the leaves and smell it. Exactly. That's a beautiful idea. I think as a farmer, it's a continual journey of learning, of iterating and of testing and trying different things out. So from far, right, when people just look, oh, it looks very different. What I want you guys to think about is whether you can make it more cohesive. There's no such thing as success or failure. It's just a, a journey that you, you embrace. Yay, yeah, done. Wow. Come and visit so they'll like go in and check it out. Okay. Yeah, so we get around here. Yeah. Okay. You know you okay? With it? Yeah. Bye -bye. All right, boys. Let's start the planting in. You can put the tomatoes there. You can let the sweet potato rest, and you can sprawl all over. We've got some mint, basil, tomato, and sweet potato plants. You see, right now you are trying to push it up, but later when the rain comes, it will all flatten it again. So if that doesn't work, you need to dig it deep, inside and deep inside. Punian has also given us some pak choy and kill. One sponge per hole. If not, it will get too overcrowded. Boys, do you realize that there's no water flowing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because the pump is not on, but we're going to turn it on right now. So fingers crossed. And it's time to cycle the tank. This means creating beneficial bacteria in the water that will break down the ammonia from things like fish waste. Ammonia is hazardous to fish, so we need to get this step right. Since the process will take at least a few weeks, it's best to try with smaller fish like guppies for now. Alright boys, good job in setting up the aquaponic system. So we'll see you in a month's time. For better or for worse. <laughs> and let's see how everything is going. Wait, how, how can we help this fish? So I've been a teacher in urban farming for a couple of years now. And I think in Singapore, the way we are taught to teach is to be quite structured. We have very specific things we need to, to talk about and specific ways to teach them. We're always very outcome driven, which is not a bad thing. But also, I think there might be an opportunity to balance some of that structure with how nature works. You know, nature is very chaotic. Nature is sometimes uh, opportunistic. And I'm here to learn whether I can include some of that more free flow style of teaching in the way I conduct Shana. my lessons. Bye. I take that as a half, half okay. yes. Do you need to feed them? She just ignored me. Morning. Morning. <laughs> See, doesn't work. I've been trying to befriend the kids, but they've all rejected me. Uh, nobody wants to be my friend. Is that a kitty cat? Yes. Oh, it's so cute. It looks like a tiger. Yeah. <laughs> Can you be my friend today? Yeah. Okay, good. Yay. <laughs> Finally made some friends. <laughs> So help me understand the principles behind the school. I think the main thing is very simple. A school without boundaries. And the methodology is learning through play. Yeah, just these two simple mottos. Grace, today we're going to transfer my long beans to the big pot. So we're going to fill that up, right? Nah. Fill me inside? Yes! Yeah. You think I can squeeze into the pot? Yeah. <laughs> we want to let people know that the rigid school system it's only developing one side of the brain, yeah, not the creative side. What's the water for? I might have planned. The first element is removing the books and then giving freedom to the teachers to create ideas on their own instead of being bounded by a syllabus. Chocolate. It's chocolate? Mm. <laughs> All this freedom, it will go back to the child. The children will have freedom to engage with the teachers as well. Oh. Do you like gardening? Yeah!
Alright, I think Oh, very I'll nice. What, what do you like about gardening? For a sweet okay, yeah, I I So, how long is it gonna take before we can eat the green beans? Six! Six, what? Six o'clock? You mean today we're planning the seed, we can eat the green bean by today? Today, you can eat it. Today yes. already? When you put it in, you can Oh, it's a, it's a magic, it's a magic bean, right? Yeah. Tomorrow? Wow, I didn't know green bean grows so fast. Please go to farmer, please. Thank you. And we're gonna put it to feed the world. I've been in the teaching industry for about 20 years. Most of the education system, we talk a lot about holistic approach. But we are actually just building up the IQ, not the EQ or the MQ. MQ is the motor skills, their health, movement and so on. Before you start, you need to go and harvest the leaf and the flowers, okay? I realised that their foundations are not built in the preschool. So that is where I am now. I want to create a platform to build foundations. The core idea is to bring the children out of the classroom. So apart from running and spending time in the playground, I decided let's do the edible gardens. That is safe for the kids. Ready, go team! Let's go! Let's go, 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 go! Okay, squat down, ready? Yo, are you okay or not? Nino, Nino, Nino. What is this? Can you tell me what is this? Spring onion. Yes, good job. So spring onion, we pull and splash it there. We want to remove all the soil, okay? Wow, amazing. We need to pluck the roots. See? Out. It's nice and super clean. Wow. Okay. It's not really splash water. Oh, careful, okay? Don't accidentally splash water on each other. Oh, what the? Wow, that's going to be the flower. When I first come in, I was like so shocked because the kid is very friendly mm -hmm. and they feel proud that, oh, this is my things. I harvest this. You can see after they're cooking this, then they will brag to everybody, I harvest this. Then. <laughs> no, let's bring it to the kitchen. Where's the kitchen? Is it inside? Yeah. This is like the utopia of a preschool. Utopia? <laughs> it's like, you know, yes, space to express yourself. Take a picture. You can do crazy things and that's okay. <laughs> when we allow the children to take risks, you need to have a lot of self-awareness. Isn't that a great thing to build their character? Yeah. Yeah. So we must do more crazy things. Oh yeah, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> okay, then princess. Okay, princess. Oh. Maybe two ringgit for the taxi, right? <laughs> can I collect two ringgit, please? <laughs> I'm drained. I'm completely exhausted. You guys are making me so tired. Can I nap in the grass? In the grass? I think I nap here. I think I nap here. I'm in my slide. Your slide? Okay, I think I nap. Good night. Good night. Don't disturb me, okay? Munching. Have you seen any changes since sending Kelly to the nature school? They will be more independent. After they eat, they will wash the plate themselves. I saw that. That was the first thing I saw at the nature school. Right? You know, I was very pleasantly surprised. Yeah. When they first joined nature school, were you worried that they'd be very dirty, no. touching soil? No, not at all. Child should be grow up in this way. Okay. I'm not scared. You're not scared? Kelly, you finished eating all this? I'm not scared. You're also not scared. Why are you not scared? I got touched a snake before. You touched a snake before? Why oh, are you not scared of a snake itself? How do you feel that your daughter is so big? I can't believe it. <laughs> Parents are freaking out. Mimi! Shannon! They're like not sure how to feel. They're like, should I be proud of my daughter? Why is she so garang? <laughs> Before this nature school, she was crying every single day. Every week they have uh, two tests. Every Monday and every Friday. We want to make sure that you know they love education. It's not just like going through exam after exam because what's the point, you know? 
We have been through the education system. We, we are but a book, you know, generation, so we don't want our kids to go through the same thing. Yeah. Education should be fun. It's Harvest Day in St Andrews. The boys don't know it yet, but today is actually a dry run for the finale of the whole project. They're going to take over a canteen store and do a farm-to-table pop-up. Alright boys, super excited to be back here. What are some of the challenges you, you, you observe on this system? A lot of fish died when we just introduced them. Probably the water is not really suitable for them. I'll take a little problem like an overcrowding issue. Yeah, that's a good point because everything is so crowded. There's competition for light and other resources. So, how can we deal with that? Well, we could cut away some of the sweet potatoes so there's more space for other plants. Exactly. So, later, we're going to have a barbecue and then we'll harvest some of the plants to give them more space. Are you ready to do some harvesting? Yes! Yeah! Okay, yeah. uh, Chris, is this flower edible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for it. We can harvest all the flowers from the leafy vegetables so that you'll prevent it from going to seed and extend its life. It tastes kind of like... It tastes good. It tastes good. No, why? Wow, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, I, I actually want more. <laughs> you know, as you all harvest in the future as well, right? Use this time to look at the leaves closely. Check whether there are any insects, check whether there are any issues with the plants. How do you figure out what leaves are doing well and which ones are not doing well? If the colour is nice and green and the size is nice and large, I think that's a good sign that it's doing well. Boys, let's look at this the basils, right? It's looking a bit sad. So sometimes it may not be time for you to eat yet, but just uh, prune them so that they'll grow better in the future. There's going to be five things today. The first will be a salad from the garden. For the tilapia, we just marinate it with a bit of soya sauce, pandan, and lemon leaves, and chuck it on a barbecue. Sweet potato leaves, we'll stir fry it with a bit of garlic and soya sauce. And the last dish will be a basil pesto pasta. I'll just go crazy, just like. Then we'll do a very simple drink a herb infusion water. Yeah, look at that. I think I'm not salty. Yeah. 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 We have a bit more salt. You don't put salt a lot. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, someone forgot your salt. Oh, that's Doing really well. Many much fun. Many much fun. When it comes to cooking, Aaron's like really into it. Very nice. Okay, no worries, no worries. Yeah, great. Well done. We have successfully cooked fish. Nice. I'm on the road again this time to visit the ultimate natural classroom. I'm at Pusang National Park in Northern Thailand, where youths from different districts have gathered to learn from my friend, Chef Suritra. This morning, since 4.30 a.m., they, they try to set up to complete the menu that they plan for breakfast today. Mm. Today is a practice run for an upcoming event called Pusang to Table where the kids have to conjure up dishes that showcase the best of local produce. What's even more amazing is that here, it's the youths who are empowering the youths. <laughs> Feng is one of Suritra's students, and today, she's the executive chef. She's demonstrating contemporary cooking techniques to her peers, most of whom are amateur cooks. It's good! <laughs> The brown butter is really special. The recipe is all in her head. It's really amazing. It's great that the kids love to be involved in this whole process. It's super interactive, it's super fun for them as well. When she teaches it, her fellow, you know, um, youth 
listen to her. I'm going to get it. When I was in my teens, I had no idea what I was doing with life. When I was 15, I was just catching spiders and doodling in class. Definitely not doing anything productive like what Fang and the kids here are. I think if, if I had a chance to turn back time, and if I were to go back to school again, I would love that school is, is done in this format. I think it's very effective because obviously there's a lot of ownership by the youth themselves. If I were teaching, it just might be like, not as effective. No, it's a failure. Is it on? Maybe it's not even on. Oh man, rookie mistake. I didn't even turn on the fire. She's like, so disappointed. She's like, get out of my kitchen. She's like, okay, that goes in the dustbin. <laughs> you sure? No, 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 that's a... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll eat it, I'll eat it. <laughs> it's too ugly. It's a bit high. This is Fang's palette. She's doing a pancake painting of a rabbit face. Essentially, what she's trying to do is a uh, demonstration piece, and everyone would follow exactly what she's doing. But she's making it harder and harder. <laughs> it's, it's getting more and more complicated. Nice. <laughs> Look at Fang. She's like crushing it. I think she's like a really good inspiration for youth at her age. Today's goal is to inspire youth such that they can create their own dishes that are modern yet reflect their heritage and culture. Nice for the, for the Instagram. I think it's time we put culture back into agriculture. The lesson ends here for the youth. But Fang and Suritra have other plans for me. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> They're like hunters, which is pretty impressive. And look at his face, he's just like poker face, like, yeah, I do this every other day. Well, we've got uh, two beautiful chooks. And uh, time is the, the man. <laughs> So we're gonna do something to them? Yeah, we're gonna pray for them first. Okay. Oh, pray for them? Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to work on them, like, uh, primitively. I think the very fact that the youth have to learn how to raise a chicken and eventually kill it to put food on the table, it inculcates a sense of respect in the youth themselves. I think you can read it all in books or watch videos, but you're still very disconnected and doing it yourself makes you treasure this process very, very much. You know, this way of culinary education is very unique. What sort of impact have you seen in the youths? Definitely it's about themselves first. Especially the youth in this kind of like rural area. Not much chance to, you know, having something that defy how they want to be. They gain more confidence. And this is so important how they, you know, could extend it and use it to build up their own identity. Second thing is about the family. So when they come together to work on something okay. meaningful, that also enhance the sense of yeah. cultural awareness that they have. That could also, you know, enhance their ability to understand ecosystem, ecology, sustainability food security. I have attended culinary school back home, but this is so much more, you know. This is incorporating values, incorporating culture. I think it's very, very transformative. Yes, that's the word, transformative. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm gonna miss this, man. I wish I could like come back here every weekend and just play in the stream with them. <laughs> Life would be so nice.
Today is our graduation day. So all of you will be commissioned young urban farmers. You can come up and I will bestow the hat on you. Oh wow, very excited. Good. I think you I think you need to like bow down a bit. <laughs> Three months ago, the boys were introduced to aquaponics. A lot of hard work went into setting up our own system. Young urban farmer. Today, our final task is to take over a canteen stall and be entrepreneurs for the day. Oh, it's too big for you. The goal is to make use of produce grown in our farm. Julia, you do kale? You just pluck. Wait, Richard, you do potato leaf. Then yeah, we do flower farm. Oh, we smell it, it's called it's okay. Wow. Oh, hey, look, look at the tomatoes. So I think that's great. It's not great. Yeah, you guys don't know what the tomato and what's a great. It's your time to read. Right. Uh, this is mint, uh, so we're basically plucking off the big leaves. Wait, and what? What did you just call this? We all... We, uh, are they not mint? Did we pluck the whole one? Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> Which one are mint? I just smell like mint. Yeah. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, this no, no. What's going on? I think they are a mix of basil and mint. Yes. So I'll go oh, check it. This is all basil. Yeah, now, in charge of the entire prep team, we prep all the vegetables, we wash them, we also cut them, we also do all the garnishes to make sure they are clean. The menu today is pesto pasta with roasted cashews on it. Second, we have a fish taco. We've done a bit of research. If the taco is easy to make, we can get it out fast. I think it will sell really well. Whoa. Okay, use your use your middle finger as a tiger. Yeah. Come on, come on. It's okay. It's okay if you mess up a bit. Because this on the taco, people are going to all eat here at the same time. It's like very bland, so we need to add more cashews and more like more things are very flavorful. Thinking back to Thailand, seeing the Thai uh, youth being able to be empowered and, and self-run gave me the inspiration to take a step back as much as I could. I actually didn't spend time training them how to work in the kitchen, but these are all things that they just picked up along the way by themselves, so kudos to them. Done marinating. Awesome. So I think it's important that the outcome is not so critical, you know. I think what's important to me is that they go through this process of learning and figuring stuff out. There's going to be many unforeseen things along the way, but they'll be able to put their creativity to the test. So we do like one fish first. And they'll be able to problem solve along the way. Okay, okay. Put your mouth. Are you done? Are you, is it tender? It's done. A, a bit firm or not firm? A bit firm. Nice. This is our pesto pasta with uh, the sweet potato leaf and the flour. So guys, this is called a taco and it costs <laughs> uh, 280. Uh, 280. So this is one of the best tacos you can ever find in Selendu. Because there's tilapia, onions, coriander, tomatoes. My favorite sauce, mayo. I'm actually very excited about how this is. So extra. Very good. 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 Very the best <laughs> <laughs> This is the best salesman in the world. <laughs> At the very beginning, the goal was really to see if the kids can take on this entire project by themselves. It was quite audacious, you know, not only having to garden but also to cook. My job is to cook the tilapia. And honestly, I wasn't sure if they would be up to it. But again, they, they proved me wrong. Uh, very like satisfying because like oh, once you like grow like everything that you cook like you can like taste your sense yeah. of achievement in like the food that you love. I think today with the finale they performed really really amazingly. Oi taco! I also want one, I also want one. Kaden you're a pro man. Look at them, they have a following. It's, it's really crazy. There's a, there's a huge line ahead of time. We haven't even started selling it. Do we do it? Do you want to win? Hot green, Van Eyed, Camouflage. Oh, it looks good. We just uh, stand by the last, how many more? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let's see how many more. I will call you guys. Gabriel, come on, come on, Gabriel. Gabriel! Fire, can't you fire? Okay, guys, we got five tacos left. 
five tacos left. And that's it. You're almost done. Creating a new dish on the fly. Hey. True entrepreneurs, man. Hello. They're trying to clear every single thing here. And Jitter just went crazy when he found that there are extra taco shells. Very nice tacos. The sad thing is that this is our last box of pasta. You can sell that one as well. You can take this. Oh no, this is a whole line that... Upon 10, how many, how many months? 8 by 5. 8 by 5. Yeah. Do you know, do you taste that the vegetables are very fresh? Yes. Do you know that it's grown in St. Andrews? Yes, I know that. Oh, yes, okay. I walk past every time. <laughs> uh, Ada, at your house! Stop, stop, stop! Ow, ow. Stop! Hey, stop! Why, why, why? Many of them don't realise that this is actually a lesson in life. They think that this is just a farming activity. But I think farming is really a journey. And this is what I hope that they experience. Using farming as a tool to learn about life skills, to learn about friendships, to learn about problem solving. This is what I hope the kids will take away from this journey. Don't disturb me, okay? Set! Go, Tio, Tio, Tio!